the darkness. What's going on, folks? It's Blue Bear here. Uh, this week, I will be doing the second Blues Budget Battle Brew video in a row. Again, these are my 60-card kitchen table, learn how to play the game, or just have fun with your friends kind of decks. Last week, I did Death by Thopter. This week, I'm going to be doing something pretty cool, uh, Mono Black Devotion. So, this deck is basically uses the devotion mechanic to win the game. And not directly win the game. It's something that has devotion will win the game, but I'll go over that with you right now. So, when I say devotion, that means black pips is what they're called on the casting cost side of a card. So for each one of these, that is what your devotion to a color is. So if this has two black mana on the mana, uh, the two black mana symbols or pips as they call them up here on the upper right hand corner, your devotion is one for this card, two for something that has two black pips, and then you add them, they're additives. So if you have multiples of these, each single mana symbol on the cards up here only, not down here, but up here counts as devotion. So that's the basic gist of the, of the deck. I'm going to show you how it wins. So the one drop is going to be Serrated Scorpion. So it's one to cast, one black. It's a one, two, so it's actually got a, a good amount of stats for being a one to cast thing. It also has when Serrated Scorpion dies, it deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life. So I wanted to include things in this deck that also helped you win without having to use Devotion so that you could actually have more than one opportunity to win. So that's the first one. I got a play set of those. So technically... This would give you four devotion if you had all four out. And then the possibility of draining your opponent of eight life and ga uh, gaining eight life yourself. All right. The two drop is two black mana. So you have this has a devotion of two. And remember, if these two were on the board, that's two plus one. So that would equal three devotion. All right. It's a two. It's black knight. It's a two, two first striking protection from whiter. Uh, I went over all the cards that had multiple black mana symbols on the casting cost. And there weren't many that were good. This is one of the better ones that I could find. So a play set of those. So now our devotion for these is up to 8, plus these, that's 12. You get the idea. Uh, the first rare is Nantuko Shade. It is a 2 to cast 2-1 that you can pump. So this deck is going to literally just have swamps in it so that you can cast everything you need. There is no real colorless mana ability in this deck because I wanted as many black mana symbols on the casting cost as I could. So that makes Nantuko Shade not horrible. It's still a 2 to cast 2-1 that you can pump. So there's another one in here that I'll go over in a minute. Uh, the next one up is Dread Warlock. It's got two black mana and one of any. It's a 2-2 that can't be blocked except by black creatures. So, again, going with the theme of trying to do more damage so that when you do finally do that kill blow, which I'll go over in a little bit, for Devotion, you can at least get some mana, or not mana, some life points off of your opponent easier. So this one has, uh, it used to be, uh, it's actually better than Fear. Fear makes it so it can't be blocked by, except by creatures that are black or artifacts. This one actually can't be blocked by artifact creatures either. So it's a better Fear. And it has a good set of devotion that it can add to you. So I got a play set of those. Dread Shade is the other one that's like the Nantuko Shade. <clears throat> it's three black mana symbols. <clears throat> now we're really getting up there. For a 3-3 three, three, that has the same ability as the Shade, so you can pump a black into it to pump it up. Plus one, plus one, it's on the turn for each black you pay. Night Veil Spectre. So here's an interesting one. I wanted to explain this to you. So this symbol, or this card is either three black, three blue, or a combination of the three. This is hybrid mana. Its devotion counts as both three black and three blue. It is a 2-3 flyer, and the only reason why it's in here is for the devotion part of it. Its ability isn't actually that bad, though. It says whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles the top card of their library, and then you may play the cards exiled with Night Veil Spectre. Now, the problem is, is that you still have to pay the correct mana cost, so if, if they're playing something that's not black, you're not really going to be able to cast them. It's just good to get resources out of your opponent's library. <laughs> Uncle Istvan! Or, I'm sorry, Istvan. It's not Ista, it's Istvan. So it's a 4 to cast, 1-3. Three. three black mana pips. Helps your devotion. All damage dealt to him <clears throat> by creatures is reduced to zero. So, he's a really good blocker. He's in here so you can keep your life points up. So you can survive while your other stuff deals damage. Your devotion creature that I'm going to show you deals damage and you can win. Uh, this is here because of two reasons. Obviously, the three black mana symbols. But he actually is a really good stalemate guy for you. So, there are a lot of decks out there like red deck wins or goblins or very heavy ag aggro decks. This guy kind of helps you stave that off a little bit. Now remember, the damage reduced to him is, or the damage dealt to him is reduced to zero. He still deals that one damage, so keep that in mind. Now four of them, our devotion is getting up there. <coughs> Erebos is Titan, so this one again is three black mana and one of any. It is a five five that says as long as your opponents control no creatures, it is indestructible. Not really that helpful. Uh, it's here for the fact that it's a four to cast five five, and I have something in the upgrade guide that I'm going to do for you that I'll, I'll tell you about in a little bit. Uh, and then whenever a card leaves an opponent's graveyard, you may discard a card. And if you do, you can return him from your graveyard to your hand and recast him, obviously, later. <clears throat> so, repeatable. Um, it's not... I'm not going to say that that's a, a useful ability. It can be useful. 
The kill card in this deck, one of the two anyway, is Grey Merchant of Ashfidel. This thing is two black, so it provides two devotion to black. Three of any for a 2-4 that when he enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, or X life is your devotion to black. You gain life equal to life lost this way. So, if you for some reason have four cards out, and they happen to equal seven total devotion, and then you cast him, remember, when he enters the battlefield, he adds to your devotion. So then you have seven devotion, then him, so that's nine. When he comes into play, he will make each opponent lose nine life, and you gain nine life. I got two of them in there because this is your kill card. It's a good card. Now, removal is a thing that black does, but I've got a different way to do it for this deck. <clears throat> I wanted to add ways to add devotion to you while also hurting your opponent's creatures that are in the way. I start with Paralyze. This is a lot of words on the card. Let me simplify for you. It's one to cast our enchantment that you enchant a creature with, and it doesn't untap during its controller's untap step unless that person pays four only during their untap step. And when it comes into play, it actually taps the creature, so it starts off just like a blues prison enchantments that they have, where they come into play, they tap the creature, and it doesn't untap during their untap step. This is similar to that. It's actually cheaper. <clears throat> it's one black instead of like, I think it's two blue and one for those. This is one black. Now, the reason why it's cheaper, not only is it an older card and they didn't start taking this out of black and putting it in blue, but it's because this has a way to untap the creature, which is to pay the four. Now, in a game that's, you know, using 60 card decks, games don't go as long as they do in Commander, so that four actually is quite uh, high. So I got a play set of those. Continuing with the theme of having R's do all your work, <coughs> uh, dead weight. It's a one to cast R, so this will add devotion to your uh, board for Grey Merchant of Asherdale. What I would say here is this. It can stay on the board, but it depends on what your opponent's creatures are. So here's the weird thing. You can put it on a creature that's got two or less toughness and it'll kill it. Or you can put it on somebody's creature that's got more than two toughness so that it's just a very weak creature but it's still on there, adding to your devotion of the one black. And that's what I've got here with a couple of these cards that I'm going to show you. So you can put it on something to kill it, or you can put it on something to make it weaker, but it stays on the board and adds to your devotion. So I got four of those. I got a Clawing Torment. So this one does uh, an artifact or a creature. And the Enchanted Permanent, if it's a creature, gets minus one, minus one, and cannot block. And then the Enchanted Permanent has, at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose a life. Now, <clears throat> you have to transfer that to your, the person who owns the actual creature artifact. That these words go on to that creature, so it helps drain your opponent down of life. Again, I tried to find ways to make other things help kill your opponent. So I got two of them in there. Enfeeblement, so two black mana. It gives the creature minus two, minus two, just like a uh, dead weight. I like this one because it had the two black mana. Got four of them. And then the other kill card here is drain life. I've put four of these in here, all right? I got a play set of those. What this does is it costs two, one black and, I'm sorry, one black and one of any. And then an additional cost of black mana. So, basically, consider a third thing here of an X, and the X can only be uh, paid in black mana. For each black mana, you pay an addition to the casting cost, target whatever. So this one targets a creature or player. I think that it's been uh, updated to also hit Planeswalkers if need be. Uh, it drains their life. So it takes, for each black mana, it deals one damage to that player. Actually, it's I think it's just they lose a life. Uh, in addition to getting a new game of life for each other. Yeah, it just loses life. It's not deal damage. Oh no, it is deal damage. I don't know if they revised this or not. I'll have to look. Uh, but it deals a damage to a creature or a player for each black mana you spent in addition to its casting cost. And then you gain a life for each time, for each damage it dealt. So, same theory here. You, it's basically a black fireball, if you will. But instead of being a fireball, it's actually draining their... Instead of just dealing damage, it's draining their life and giving it to you. So, And I got four of them in there so that you can do it a couple times if you need to. And that's the gist of the deck, actually. So, Grey Merchant of Asherdale is the... First kill card, Drain Life is the second kill card, and then you've got other things that do it too. So this will do it. You've got the ability to attack. You know, there's just many ways you can do it. The rest of the deck is just swamps at this point. It's 20 swamps because there's not really much that in non-basic lands that could help this theory too much. So I didn't really include them in the budget because they weren't budget. So that's the deck in a nutshell. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions for cards that you can really get this deck going. There is one specific card that's just really nasty. So I'll go over that right now. Okay, let's see what we can do to really make this bad boy nasty. There actually isn't really much needed, so let's start with some creatures. The most obvious thing to do is to take out the four Uncle Isfins and replace them with four Phyrexian Obliterators. While the Uncles are great on a budget, the Obliterators are far superior for both the devotion it provides, its power and toughness, and its built-in ability to force people to sacrifice permanents when it takes damage. While cheaper, since its reprint in Phyrexia all will be one, it's still not a bulk rare. 
I would also suggest taking out one Erebos' Titan and one Nantuko Shade and replacing them with two Grey Merchants of Asphodel. The Obliterators would fill the Titan's role, and adding more Garys, or Grey Merchants if you will, just makes sense because having more cards that can be a finisher by simply just being cast seems like a priority. As for the non-creatures, you could take out the, all the auras and replace them with removal spells. I said earlier that I like the auras because they add devotion, but if you'd rather spells for the removal instead, then take all the auras out and replace them with things like Fatal Push, Cut Down, and or Blood Chief's Thirst. These spells are some of the best targeted removal spells Black currently has to offer, so if you do want to reduce your possible devotion by removing the enchantment-based removal, I would suggest these spells in their place. As far as lands go, there was only one land I could find that helps Devotion, and luckily, it could be useful. So, I suggest taking out two Swamps and adding two Nykthos Shrine to the Nyxes, because the amount of mana you could potentially make with the Shrines could prove useful for casting multiple things in one turn to steal some wins from out of nowhere. And there you have it, a budget mono black devotion deck with a couple of things you could swap in to make this deck really nuts. I told you there wasn't much needed to make this deck much nastier. This deck, like the Death by Thopter deck from last week, will be available for sale at the South Jersey Geek Fest in April. And then if I still have it for some reason after that, it will be available on the Facebook page or through the Facebook Marketplace. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching, and remember to join me next week for another Blue Bears Games original build. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or concerns, or you just want to talk or chat about any of the videos I put out, you can do so using any of the methods I have displayed here. Additionally, if you would like to support the channel, you can do so in three ways. Donations are accepted and greatly appreciated. I have three methods with which you can do so displayed on the screen, and keep in mind that no amount is too small. If donations aren't your thing, and you would like to get something for your money, that's great too. I sell a lot of the decks I present on the channel, as well as mystery packs, so if you're interested in any of these, you can contact me using the information I have up on your screen right now. Directly contacting me is usually the best and cheapest way to do so, but you can always look at what I currently have available on the Facebook Marketplace. And lastly, if you want to show your love and support for the channel, but like myself, are a little strapped for cash, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, watch some videos and give them a like, and possibly share them out on your social medias you use to help spread my content to more people. No matter what way you choose is greatly appreciated and will help support the channel, and I thank you for it. Sadly, that is all the time I have for this video. Thank you for watching, and please, stick around and watch some of the many great videos I've posted over the last few years, and remember to check back again for new content I'll be posting every week. Have a great day.